Kiribati is one of the most isolated countries in the world. 33 islands scattered across more than three and a half million square kilometres of the Pacific Ocean. Most of the land lies less than two metres above sea level, making it vulnerable to the impact of climate change. And I'm joined now by the president of Kiribati, Tanesi Maumau. President, thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you so much, Stan. I want to come to climate change in just a moment. First of all, the decision by your country to recognise mainland China over Taiwan. Why did you make that choice? What influenced you to switch the allegiance from Taiwan to the mainland China? So since 2016 until 2019, we were doing very well with Taiwan. But quite certainly and surprisingly in 2019, when we had three projects, very big projects that Taiwan was funding, somehow the decision was changed and they withheld the approval of those projects project without any good reasons explained. Despite that problem, there were other quite diplomatic issues with their diplomatic staff here in the and we were taken to believe that there is something going on with the, the way Taiwan is handling the issue. And so in the end, and for the sake of our people in terms of the Kiribati vision for 20 years and the project that we were anticipating to be funded by Taiwan, uh, in the end, they didn't turn out to be as planned. So the, the, uh, the cabinet finally decided that maybe it was uh, about time to switch back to, to resume our diplomatic relations with uh, China. But that was the decision and taken by the, the cabinet at that time. And we were leaving the entire final decision to the people uh, since the election was about to, to be made. Is this really what we're talking about now, a bidding war? that we see in the Pacific. It's what China can offer versus what Taiwan may be able to offer or what Australia may be, may be able to offer. I don't see it that way, but I see there's a, there may be something wrong or something that uh, Taiwan is not uh, happy to, con to continue with our diplomatic relations. Because as I said, it was a pity that uh, we were dealing with them very well right from 2016 until all of a sudden in 2019, they changed, they changed the, the, the scope of things. Mr. President, I want to get your thoughts on how you see the influence of what we see as the quadrilateral group, Australia, the United States, Japan and India, and what influence that is going to have in the region, particularly when it comes to pushing back against China's growing influence throughout the Asia-Pacific. You are correct that the Pacific is becoming a, a crowded place where many partners are increasing, increasing their influence as well as their presence in the Pacific. And the intensity of this, this sort of a tension is getting apparent. But what is important is to our, our partnership that is based on mutual trust or mutual respect and the respect of the sovereignty of each country in the region. Of course, we're not just talking about the Quad, but there was also the AUKUS announcement, the UK, Australia and the United States, and the decision by Australia to pursue the development of nuclear-powered submarines. What was your... What was your first thought about that and how do you see that in terms of the broader strategic challenges in the region and pushing back against what some see as China's aggression in the Asia-Pacific? It came as a big surprise. And sometimes as small island states, we thought that we are part of the solution. We are part of the issue because we are members of the Pacific family. We are in the Pacific family. And everything that touches on the Pacific or issues related with the Pacific, we need to be consulted. We need to be informed as well. But the, the AUKUS uh, 
issue came as a surprise to, to me and to my people as well. When you say, sir, it, it came as a surprise, um, was that a bad surprise? Do you, did you feel as if you'd been left out of this and you would prefer to have been more involved? I would say that that's the right approach and decision to, to take. That's, that would be the observation. It wasn't, uh, well, sometimes the, the developed countries, they have the means, they have the technology, they have the power. We don't have. But what is the purpose of having a genuine partnership? Did you feel disrespected? I must say so. And have you raised this with Australia? We have raised it through our, through my del delivery, uh, the, the one of the engagement at the UN forum. And what response did you get? Well, I haven't got any response at the moment. It was just last week that I made the delivery. So you, you felt as if you were disrespected, you were not consulted, you've raised the concern with Australia, and just to be clear on this, you have not had any response yet? No, I haven't got any response yet. But I hope they'll be responding soon. So if you had been consulted, would you have been in favour of Australia taking the decision to cross that nuclear threshold, to develop nuclear-powered submarines, or do you have concerns about this step? I think the, the important thing is to understand. Without understanding what is all about this power, this submarine nuclear power uh, technology, uh, in, because we've been having that trauma for so many long years, our people in the eastern part of country, country in Christmas Island, they suffered after this uh, nuclear bombing were carried out in the island. So with all that trauma, I think I, it, be, it would be as wiseful and sensible at the least because we've been vict victims of that uh, uh, nuclear bomb testing. So with that, that nuclear sort of concept in mind, we thought that anything related with nuclear, maybe a bit, uh, a kid, uh, a bit of a courtesy to, to raise it and to discuss before and with uh, countries with your neighbours. This is all about neighbourly, having a neighbourly decision. When we talk about security, Mr President, one of the other challenges for you, of course, is climate change. What would you like to see more from the Quad countries, but also Australia, which at the moment is involved in a debate about reaching net zero emissions by 2050? Australia, the Prime Minister of Australia, is very aware, well aware of our stand, because it was in the forum, 2000. 19 forum in Tuvalu, that we ask very strong questions to Australia about the, its inability to follow the, the mandates or the requirement of the Paris Agreement in terms of cutting down carbon emissions and its continuous effort to trade, to trade in the coal. So the coal industry in Australia is not making any, any efforts in line of the, the, the Paris Agreement's uh, requirements. So we ask Australia that uh, as a neighbour, it should be doing something big. So just finally, Mr President, ahead of the next meeting in Glasgow, and there is still some debate about whether our Prime Minister Scott Morrison will attend that, what clear signal are you looking to from Australia? Go lower than, the, than what is happening now in Australia. If uh, Australia can convince the region and the world that it can go below the net zero emissions, uh, that would be a very big achievement. President Marmel, I appreciate you giving us your time. Thank you. My pleasure.